Okay, so in the last video we introduced the concept of Fourier series and basically how they can be used to approximate any function that is periodic within some interval. In this case the interval is from minus pi to pi. And basically we're going to take an infinite sum of trigonometric functions and as we increase the terms in the sum we're going to approach this function more accurately. So in this case we have this function that has period 2 pi, so it is defined between minus pi and pi, and we can assume that it is continuous and it keeps repeating in cycles in both directions along the x-axis. Now obviously to compute the Fourier series expansion of this function we need three terms. We need a0, an, and bn. So we need those three Fourier coefficients. Now we already talked about how a0 represents the average value of the function within the interval in question. So in this case we have this uh, interval that is symmetric about the y-axis. And because of it is symmetric about the y-axis we can use properties of this function such as is the function even or off. In this case if we look closely this is actually an odd function because it satisfies the condition that minus x equals to minus f of x. Or in other words, if we put this, it should be equal to the negative of this value, and that's what we have here. In, a, in another way you can look at it is that if you add this area to this area, do you get zero? Yes. So basically, because this is the integral between those two, in, uh, between that interval, that's going to be zero. Or essentially, just the average value of these two functions is going to be zero. So that's why we get a naught equals to zero without even having to integrate it. So that's a really nice simplification. In the previous video, we also talked about how for the case when we have odd functions like this one, we have the simplification that a n is also going to be zero. And the reason behind that is that a n is defined as follows. So we have 1 over pi. In this case, this is what we would have based on the period and the interval. Minus pi, pi, f of x. And we have cosine um, n x dx. So this would be our Fourier coefficient for a, but we notice something that because the interval is symmetric, we essentially have a function here, because this is an odd function, f of x is an odd function, and cosine is an even function, this product is going to turn out to be an odd function. So essentially an odd times even equals odd, in the same way that minus times plus equals minus. So this is a really interesting definition that we need to take advantage of. So essentially this is also going to be zero because of that symmetric interval. So that leaves us with the only Fourier coefficient that is non-zero which is going to be bn. So we're going to have the following 1 over pi minus pi by f of x is going to be defined as a piecewise function so we need to basically split this into two different integrals dx. So basically we're going to have, I'm actually going to write it down here because we're going to need some more space. 1 over pi and we're going to have, we're going to split this up into two. So that's going to be minus k sine of nx dx from minus pi to zero and then we're going to have, on this side, we're going to have k 0 to pi of sine nx dx. So this is going to be our integral. So now what we can do is we can integrate each of these functions individually. So this is going to give us the following. 1 over pi. We're going to have 1 over pi. K, because remember when we integrate this we're going to get minus cosine so that's going to be plus 1 over n cosine nx from minus pi to 0 and then here minus cosine that's going to be minus k 1 over n cosine nx from 0 to pi let me just make this a little bit smoother and this is going to lead to the following expression. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the definition cos nx 
equals to minus 1 to the power of n because that's something we introduced in the last video as well so basically this expression tells you that all the multiple um, all the multiple integers of oh actually it should be pi that's what I'm missing that should be pi not x all the multiple integers of pi are going to give you either minus 1 or 1 because remember that cosine starts like this and then it goes like this so here we have 0 here we have pi here we have um, so it should be pi and 2 this should be pi and then this should be 2 pi so basically at the f when n equals to 1 so that's a pi we have minus 1 so that's 1 yeah that's minus 1 when we have 2 pi so that's in n equals to 2 we have positive 1 so yeah that satisfies this and then it keeps repeating like that so we can express cosine of n pi equals to minus 1 to the power of n so that simplification leads to the following after we substitute for those two uh, values in there 1 over n minus minus 1 to the power of n over n this is going to be minus k minus 1 to the power of n over n minus 1 over n so it looks a bit messy for now but this is going to simplify quite nicely so we're going to get 1 over pi kn plus 2k over n times minus 1 n plus 1 and the reason for this n plus 1 is essentially because here we have this minus and basically minus 1 times minus 1 to the power of n remember when we have the same base we add the exponents so basically this means that we have n plus 1 here same with here we have this minus here that gets carried on to with this multiplication so that's going to become n plus 1 and then these two are going to be added together and then we're going to have plus k over n so i'm just going to group those two together and in the end you should get the following expression 1 plus minus 1 to the n plus 1 so that is going to be the value of your coefficient so for any n that you choose you're going to get a different value here so we can do a little bit of, uh, of a test by finding different values so basically this is what we're going to have 1 plus minus 1 n plus 1 is going to take on two possible values so it is going to take on the value 2 when n is, e is an odd number and then it's going to take on the value 0 when add n is an even number because if you put an even number here plus 1 that becomes odd and minus 1 to the power of an odd number is minus 1 so that's cancel side becomes 0 and if you put an odd number that becomes even so that's become 1 plus 1 to equal to 2 so that helps to simplify so let's let's calculate a few of these values so let's have b1 equals to this value here so b1 that's n equals to 1 so that's going to be this value here so that's going to be 4k over pi then b3 is going to be 4k on 3 pi and hopefully you can see that there, there's a little bit of a sequence happening here as well and then b4 is going to be equal to 4k over 5 pi and then it keeps sorry this would be v5 not b4 b5 and then it keeps going like that because for all the when n is equal to even this becomes zero so zero times this becomes zero so obviously those cases would be no so b2 equals b4 equals b6 and for all the even subscripts we're gonna have zero so in the end we can uh, finally represent our Fourier series expansion of the function x as follows 4k pi over pi times so this is going to be to infinity of n equals to 1 sine of 2n minus 1 x over 2n minus 1 so hopefully hopefully you're able to derive this 
from what we just said that we have this expression here and basically this is what you're going to have because this is going to expand as 4k over pi times sine of x plus 1 over 3 sine of 3x plus 1 over it should be 3x here 1 over 5 sine of 5x and so on and so on so basically this these factors here are these ones that we just place here. so this is the uh, Fourier series expansion that corresponds to this particular function and in the next video we're going to look at how to apply Fourier series to functions that are non-periodic and how to make them periodic by doing some simple tricks.